What's up, people? Welcome to No Perspective, a talk show that's really from the people for the people. I'm Rue Diamond. I'm Jonathan Rock, depending on how you know me, Smitty. Uh, don't matter what you call me as long as you're listening. And I'm K-Love. And um, pretty much today, fellas, we're going to talk about relationships coming from a single man's perspective. You know, um, if you do know me, you know that I have no kids, not in a relationship. You know, most of my friends, you know, they're, they're either in serious relationships, married, kids, and I'm one of the few that does not have either. Lucky, All right? Lucky man. Quick backstory. Rue's been married, has a shorty. I'm married. I've been with my shorty for about 15 years. Kenny is always almost in a relationship and just out of a relationship. <laughs> just a little backstory. That's my man, but it's the truth. All right, go ahead. All right, so <clears throat> you guys know me fairly well. So, you know, um, question for you guys. Um, from the outside looking in, right, what you just said on the backstory, give me an explanation of what you think on why I'm always in and out of relationships. I got it. It's all right. We closed the damn show. <laughs> we can go straight to the outro, okay? Yeah, listen, all right? You know I mean? Now, because he asked me that, I'm starting with a story. Don't okay. care. I'm in Indiana. Kenny, obviously, we got a lot of Indiana stories. Kenny went to Indiana. I'm in Indiana. Long night, bro. So I'm sleep on the couch. You know what I mean? Now, Kenny, he talk. You understand what I'm saying? Right, he talk right. real good. You feel me? So he got a he got a little shorty. Shorty was official, but I ain't never met her. But Kenny is like the way he telling the story. He like, yeah, you mean you know I'm big dog. You know what I mean lay it down, control it like Rottweiler. Yeah, you know I mean he's saying he telling me the whole thing. So I'm like, all right, okay, yeah. So all I hear is this knock on the door. Bloom, 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 bloom. We all sleep. So Kenny come from downstairs. I'm sleeping on the couch, and you know I ain't answering the door because I don't. This ain't my crib. Kenny come down, answer the door. All I see is this little girl come through the doorway. I'm talking about this little girl about five foot nothing. And Kenny about six four. You know what I mean? And all she doing is yelling. <laughs> all she doing is yelling. And then Kenny look at me to see if I'm up. And I'm up. Yeah. So he looking at me like, man, he put his head in there. Like, you you know what I I'm this is what I'm gonna tell you I look like. You ever seen a chihuahua bite like a big dog, like a Rottweiler or a pit bull? Right. <laughs> and a Rottweiler just looking like, like, I don't know what to do. That's what it looked like. He looking at me like, I have no idea what to do with this little joint. And this little joint got finger in the face and she looking up. And, you know what I mean? Whoa, and then he just like, just come upstairs. <laughs> he like, yo, just come upstairs. Just come upstairs. So like she went upstairs and they worked it out. But like I just witnessed him. And situation, and he really liked it. The shorty, shorty was dope. She reminded me of Jada Pinkin from um, from Low Down Dirty Shame. Shame. She was fire. She was fire. Right? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but I seen him in a wreck, and what I see is Kenny don't like to be controlled in any way, shape, or form. Because even after that, that was the beginning of the end of you and the shorty. I remember. You understand what I'm saying? Like y'all mm-hmm. tried to work it out, but that was the beginning of the end. It was too he don't much. be liking the. He don't be liking to have control, like be under control and really have to have to answer. And when when a shorty start, at, we all know that how shorties is. Shorty start off slow, and then as you get into it with them, they start wanting more and more and more time out of you, and they start expecting more. So I think that that's where he comes, in, and it's it's just a little weird feeling. Like I gotta like I gotta give you all of this. Yeah. And it starts to start to make you feel a certain type of way. Like, man, wh- well, let like, me cut why? it though. Let me cut it. Right, she wait, was wait. out of pocket. Though, oh. The little girl, the little the little shorty. So she why was you ain't saying that to her? I'm not with all that. <laughs> why you ain't saying that to her? That, yeah, why man. you say that? You was nervous. I seen it in your face. Yo, she was violent, man. She was like a little chihuahua, bro. Getting wild. I'm telling you. And she was showing teeth in that, that little four year. <laughs> she was showing teeth. And he was she nervous. She's from Gary, man. She yeah. She's from Gary, she from Indiana. Gary Indiana. Indiana. But, yep. She wasn't right. So what, all right, I know we got on track with the story, but why was she mad is my question because I wasn't there. It, is, it, it really, that is beside the, the point is she wanted something. <laughs> I want to know what you did. Because we had a party and we had we, bad people right, this in the crib. It, this this would have She might have been right. This I might was. be on her side. This is what it was. All right. So we, I threw a party. You know, when, when Rock came out there, 
You know what I mean? It, it, it's always spurred a moment. When he was on the road, you know what I mean? It was always spurred a moment. So I'm like, all right, I'm throwing a party. So it's three, 400 people in my apartment. Yeah. Like just partying all night. So I got accused of like messing with her friend. Allegedly. Allegedly. Never happened. Nah, it was too many people in there. It was just like a party. Never happened. Everybody it was just a party. Just, nobody you know what I mean? was even yeah. with nobody. You feel me? I think I danced with her. That's what I was about I think to say. I think I danced with That happened to me too in college. I you think can't I danced with You dancing with people and I think I danced friends, with her. You had to get over that. I got yeah. clawed in the face from that before. Yeah. You got to get over I'm that. I'm in the club. It's dark. Yeah, I, was I was dipping. That. She was trying. I was dipping. Oh, yeah. I got up out of there. He just on the couch laughing. He a piece of shit, man. I can't yo, be slow grinding. What else was to do? Yo, he a piece of shit, man. I ain't never seen nothing like it, yo. You seen House Party. Huh? You can't be slow grinding on people's friends, man. Yo. It was like reverse wilderness. Like usually the bigger person is supposed to be dominant. Nah, bro. Nah. It was reverse wilderness. That was crazy, yo. man. My man was yo. He had a little fear in his eyes. I got some crazy stories too. From uh, yo, he yeah. has. He had a little fear in his eyes. Yo, you know I was man? nervous. I remember you did. Y'all remember a couple of crazy stories? <laughs> oh my god! You know what I'm saying. One time, Rude did something. The girl was mad at me. I ain't even. Know the I don't even know who you is, lady. <laughs> you know what I'm saying. I said. But you I mad used at to. Me. I, I I used to do it. You were I was, wrong. I was, I was, dead, I was dead wrong. Yeah. Dead guilty. But, but that's but like Jumped he was on saying. My car, ripped my windshield what wipers the, off. How, how she do it? Are you mad at how my she windshield? <laughs> <laughs> Clean. Yo, we had a sunroof. She, I, we was trying to pull off and like leave. She jumped through the sunroof. Ah, Bill, like yo, get this. What she? Yo, that's just it's crazy. But like I was that. wrong though. But but like I think with most men. When we first starting out, for, I, matter of fact, I tell you this. What I try to tell him, right, is I think one of the main problems with single dudes and when we live the single life, we ain't necessarily, when we talking to girls, it's it's a lot of random in that. And we not necessarily talking to girls that we would be with if we had a choice. We just talking to girls because of quantity. We, I mean, we it just, we talk. Hey, what's your name? What's your name? She looks cute. You're not really seeing what qualities that sh that girl has that actually coincides with you or helps you or benefits you in your life. So you're talking to a lot of chicks just because she bad, she got ass, she got whatever. And then now you're talking to her and you get deep and then you realize that you're not compatible with this person. You know what I mean? And now you you dealing with her and you're kind of in it all of the way. You're invested. You invested so much time and so much energy, but y'all not compatible. So what I told you the other day, we were just having a conversation in the building. You got to start changing the way that you that you actually get at the girls because obviously you hunt. You hunt a different. You're like you're a hunter. You're but you're, why are you hunting? So if you hunting just to kill. You mean you ain't really necessarily getting a quality, but like the dudes at my job, you mean to go to the hunter thing when they they want stuff to put on the wall, so they ain't just shooting anything. They wait until a, a twelve pointer, which the, the the deer that got all of the antlers come by, and they killing that. So you actually gotta start uh what like what's the word? You gotta kind of like go through all of these women that you're dealing with and only start to actually. Put the energy, effort, and time into the chicks that bring something to you. So now what will happen if a girl has something that brings to the table that benefits you, right? Now, when she starts asking you for more, you're not going to feel like, what you talking about? You're going to feel like, yo, you know what you deserve at because you bring stuff to me also. Right. You understand what I'm saying? You're not just going to because we actually, most dudes, we hunt Jones that just look good. But if they look good, but they don't have the qualities to help you in your life, then it it don't, it, that runs out it's quick. It don't matter. That, that pretty, you, you know what people say pretty this. Pretty ugly. Oh, yo, hold on. No, old heads say this to me, right? I don't think I ever understood it, but I just figured it out. They say, yo, that, that beauty has an expiration date. Now, I think we all think like, yo, all right, when she get old, it's yeah. going to be wrong. I don't think they mean that. I think it's going to be a certain point of time in the near future that you're Wait, not going to care about that pretty shit no more. She's going to have to bring something to the table. What do you, how do you help me? And the same thing, and we, I'm not just attacking women, men too. We got to do something to help you to make your life better. And that that's what I think. I'm going to go into this, bro. And I want you, I want y'all to chime in. What do, what do y'all think about this, right? I think that a lot of women, I have a lot of like friends that are girls and we have conversations all the time. And women, I, I tell Kay this all the time, I think they really don't understand men. 
they do not understand what we care about, what we want. They think that it's about just like vagina and looking good. But I think that that's a big misconception with men because I don't. I, I know a whole lot of men. Now, I don't know every man in the world, but every man that I know, yo, like it, it, vagina is in abundance. You know what I'm saying? And looks, look, that shit varies. We got a, we got a, 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 a brother that you would, he be, he loves his women, but we looking at him like, yo, bro, what is you thinking, yo? <laughs> he looking at you like, I got the baddest one. And you look like, you're, yo, no, you don't, yo. <laughs> no, you look at, no, you don't, bro. No, you don't. But in his, like his eyes, the way he sees it, she's the best. So all of that stuff that like. You can't really only go by that. So what I'm saying, right? Women think that all that she got to do is be beautiful, right? Which I think that is is extremely wrong, and it's like mis, mis like it's it's extremely wrong for her to think that way because it actually leads nowhere. And because this, a chick, say a chick that's the baddest chick, right? And she actually invests a lot of her time in looking good, keeping herself up, which is wonderful, right? But then what she does is she wants a man that's actually a complete product. In most bad women, they want a man that's financially stable, right? But this is where I actually want to go into it and help everybody understand. A man that's financially stable, one thing that he understands is he understands assets and liabilities. This is a... like. Assets, an uh, asset is something that you actually bring to me. You actually make something for me or you help me. You make my life easier. A liability is just you come into this scenario and you just take. So if all you are is pretty and you don't invest your time in building some other qualities, then you're, you're going to be a liability to any man. Not necessarily take. A liability is, you would say, a car. You put it. You get in. You get into it. What you you know. You you get out of it. What you put into it. Don't you see what I'm back. saying? Yeah. Asset is something that that gives back into your your income column. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To the winning circle, to your to that's benefiting you. A liability is something that it's a it's a give give relationship. So they feel a lot of times. I I agree with you saying. Women feel that they're coming to the table with, you know, their looks or etc. And vice versa, like you said, you know, men men also and. That's just a. That's a that's a give give relationship. You know what I mean? I'm giving you one thing, you're giving me another. But like you said, y'all might not be equally yoked to where you done got in too deep with the female, and now you don't. Now you stuck. You know what I mean? Like it, you can't you can't get out of it. And uh, to to piggyback off what you were saying, as far as just like with with women, they don't understand men because we're not honest. Yeah. Most men aren't honest. They don't tell when I've had. I'm not. The, I've had women. I'm being. I'm gonna keep it real. I've had women like he says. I have female friends, and they come to me and they talk to me and they say, "Oh, well, he's doing this and he's doing that." And I say, "Listen, go by his behavior, because he's not gonna tell you the truth. Why? Because he want to keep his leverage and he don't want to reveal his true, his true intentions to where it might be nothing. He might just be keeping you on the line." And, you know, the guys might be mad at me, but that's real facts. You know what I mean? Because I done played all the games. Well, let me let me say this. The lying and the being honest and the truthfulness, that's not my problem. I don't have a problem telling the truth. That's not where, that's not the road that I go down, right? My problem, right, is the controlling aspect. I don't like a girl or a woman to tell me, like, Hold on, what was know, your original question? Hit me with the original question again so I can answer it. What you asked? So what, the question he asked us is, what do we think his issue is? My issue is with keeping keeping an actual steady. And game. I know now this is is sort of, you know, like a you know just a just a informational question because I want to know what you guys think. But I know my problem. I'm gonna tell you. I know it, but I want to know right what now. you think. Yeah, <laughs> I wanted to make sure this, I had the question clear. Yeah. All right. Now, with men, we were naturally most, especially men like us, we're alpha males. We we like to dominate. We like to have control. Right. Okay. In order to be in a relationship, going back to assets and liabilities, you have to be vulnerable. You have to give of yourself. So I feel that when you come to that point, to where, like Rock was saying, that's why I was quiet, because he was touching on some things, and 
I wanted to touch on him. What he was saying as far as like with the assets and liabilities, when you give of yourself, you're going to expect that back and vice versa. So you might not really, really see what you want in these females to where you know there's going to end down deep in your conscience and your heart of hearts. You don't want to invest because you know that it's not really, really what you want. So you're not willing to you're not willing to make yourself vulnerable and give of yourself because when you do find that one. You're gonna be willing to make you're gonna willing to make those sacrifices and be able to give to that. And if and if you're naive to that and maybe you feel like you may have had those ones, because I've made I've I've had, you know, a lot of learning experiences with relationships. And I don't wanna put it off on all women because he knows I had some women that I really liked. Mm-hmm. I had a couple women in life that I really had love for. You know what I mean? I, I'm not sure if Nothing was- we saying is for everybody. It's all in generality. We just speaking about our mindsets and how we've been through things. And, I mean, it should help some people. So don't take it. I but know I- when I speak to women, that's what they say. Like, everybody is, it's always not me, but we can we can actually agree that this happens in generality. So, right, like, right. let's take it out of the maybe not this right. specific one. We just talking I'm, about all right, I'm going to say one, one quick thing, right? This is what I've learned through the years, right? There's there's five different love languages, right? You gotta know your you gotta know your your mate. All right. You gotta know the person that you're with. It's affection, time, words, acts of service, meaning that you do something without expecting anything back. Just if you go to the store and you're getting food, you're buying her something. That's not a gift. And then there's gifting. That's romance. That's surprising her. That's Valentine's Day. That's women like that. That's why it's on there. It's not really for men, even though it is nice for your chick to come up, pop up with something, and get you a gift. But women, that's on there for women because they like to feel special. Right. It's just how their nature is. Those five things, two of them might be on the top of somebody's list. So for me, mine is I'm touchy feely. I'm affectionate. Right. Okay. And mine's is time. So I feel like as long as I'm getting love and I'm spending time with you, I feel like that's enough. But for some women, they feel like, well, you're not surprising me with gifts, and you're not, you know, you're selfish, and so forth and so on. You know what I mean? The words. You don't tell me that you love me. A lot of women say, you love me, you love me. I ask you all that all the time. That's because you're not saying enough if you really do. If you don't, then you see what I'm saying? But for other people, affection might not be on their top list. So for me, I was you know, was with somebody, or for example, if you're with somebody and they're not affectionate, but you are, you feel like they're not loving you because they're not touchy-feely, and you are, but it's not that they're not loving you. They might be expressing their love in another one of the five love languages. And this is all truth. This is not an opinion. This is a fact. Right. So with you, I just feel like you're at the point to where you don't want to take the time to get to know somebody. So as soon as they make you feel vulnerable, you start wanting to pull and, out. Hold on. Rue says something in, in that, right? What I feel like is the message is to first know your love language. Mm-hmm. Know the language that you need. Know what you need. Mm-hmm. Know which five is most important to you. And then... Learn the other. Learn the your guy, learn yeah. your significant other's language. Because so most, now you know you know what you know what you need. So now you can communicate that. If you're not getting it, if you're getting it, and then you now you know what they need. So now you actually can do it, and then you know you can actually see where you're where you're slipping and when you're not slipping. So know your language and, and know your uh and your significant other's language. That's beautiful. That was that's that's perfect. I couldn't have said it any better. But and also the person usually they want to be. Love the same way that they give it, so that's why he said know yourself, but then also know your mate because you might have your two, your two might be at the top, but they, they might be acts of service and gifting, mm-hmm. and that's how they want to receive it. So you might give it affection and time, but they might be giving it to you. So usually the person, the way they give it, is the way they want to receive their love language. I got a problem in that. All right, this is real. This is, and now I'm talking about me. This is my problem, and can y'all please help me with that? Right, I know my language and I know what I need, right? And I've communicated that. Right? Mm. But say if I don't well, get it somewhere. If I don't get it, for me to communicate it again, I, I feel like you I feel, feel vulnerable. Nit, I feel nitpicky. I, and I'm not that type of person. I usually deal with my problems. But like if I say if it, but this is not a problem with me. If I'm if I'm not getting something from my significant other as a man, yeah. as a man, this is where I feel like this is the biggest part of if women I, I talk to women all around, like why do men cheat? Why do men do this, that, and the third? There is it's it's so complex mm. that you can't necessarily just put Ooh, it on one thing. Wait. But I think that this I think that this is a part 
to everybody needs to understand this. This is for men. So this ain't necessarily men. We have to necessarily not be afraid of being vulnerable and right. speak when something is wrong with us. Because when I internalize problems, that's when I'm like, that's when I mess up. So I yeah. I had to what I had to do to make myself comfortable. I had to start saying stuff, even when I felt it. And I'm gonna say it like I don't want to say it because we don't. But I I be feeling mad pussy, bro. Yeah. Like when yeah. I when I gotta say petty, something to my shit, I be feeling hell. petty and pussy. Like yo, bro. Like that's not even who I am. But I gotta communicate these things because if not, I'm gonna internalize you know it. I mean? I'm gonna internalize it, and then once I internalize it. Then I deal with it myself, and it might not be the best way that's best for the relationship if I just deal with it by myself. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. that's one part that I feel like that 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 women need to understand about men. So women need to promote their man for like, yo, if you see your dude frown a face, something weird going on, you know he, he ain't talking the right way. Talk to this man because he's probably internalizing something, and that whatever he's internalizing is not going to be healthy for the relationship. Yeah. Just straight like that. And men, bro, you feeling something? I know you be feeling like, yo, like, am I am I being uh nitpicky? Am I being vul-? yes, bro, but say it. If that's your shorty and you want that relationship to work, say that. If you need something, please say it. Or if she she's not doing something that y'all communicated that she knows she needs to do and she's still not doing it, say something, bro. Because if not, all you're gonna do is internalize and you're gonna mess it up. Now, I, it's so many things that I want to say right now. I, I can't know. even it's... say enough. But this is one thing that I wanted to say that I, I don't know who I was talking to, but we was having a conversation. I want to put this out there. This is a PSA to all men. Public service. Public service announcement. I don't care who you are. Every man needs to understand this because I think that this has been one of the biggest, because the reason I came to this, we just had, it, we were talking about why the men cheat, this, that, and the third. Okay. I think this is one of the main problems with male, female, and the way that the brain works. And this could be one of your issues also. What happens, right, is we live in a society to where, you mean, it's like a fairy tale society. Fairy tales is like, my, I, got a little, I got a daughter. Fairy tales is pushed on the little girls from birth. And they think that everything is supposed to be just this fairy tale. And what men, like men have learned how to do is to play to that, to play to that fairy tale nature. So men say, like, especially a lot of the older men and the smoother men and the men that are trying to get something out of a woman, what they do is they actually play to that. So I feel like this notion of, yo, when you find the right one, you only supposed to see her. No other woman is even in sight. All you need is her. I think that that right there is one of the, the, the worst things that we could have done to help relationships because it is not real. I have too many male friends, too older, younger. I work with guys that are 60 years old. You mean older, younger, the most intelligent, and they all, they've been married for 50 years. But I have real conversations with them just by myself. And what they, and I ask them that, like, yo, listen, is it really like you, you telling me that you only see your wife? And they, uh, they look at me like, listen, bro, no. Like you say that to her to make her feel special. But in all reality, you still see all of these women. And it's not it's not wrong out of you. You have eyes. You still see them. And you'll see them and you'll actually appreciate another woman's beauty. But you know what your wife adds to you. You know how you know her value. So seeing that woman doesn't bring you out of your character because you know what your wife... Your wife keeps you from any feeling, the, the, the natural feeling you have. Like, oh, she looking good. Your wife and that... Your wife in your head is what keeps you from actually doing anything to 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 jeopardize what you got going on because you know your wife's value to you so i think that that's the problem i think that that is is say if i'm a man and say if i'm a man that's not sure i got a girl and i like her say if you you okay you got a shirt that you like right you a man but you think in your head like all i'm supposed to so is it am i am i not supposed to see any woman yet when is that supposed to start because I, you a shorty passed by and you looking like Ugh. you understand what I'm saying and now in your head you looking like well maybe this maybe she's not the one because I'm still seeing other chicks so now all it does is manifest in your head is doubt and now now you doubting like damn I do like her but I'm still seeing other girls so maybe she not the one because I still see other chicks no bro you're gonna see other chicks until you 90 years old 
You're going to see him, bro, and it's not irregular. Don't let that stop you from building with a shorty that you with because you're going to see other women. You are a man. You're a human being. I know some of the greatest men. Some of the regular, I know dudes that's been in relationships. My my uncle, one of my uncles been in married for like 70 years. Have a conversation with him and he'll tell you straight up like, yeah. But like, so? Yeah, I see. And if, and if anybody is doubting that, then why is the porn industry one of the biggest industries in the world? Why does every commercial sell sex? Because we know that everybody, men, we have eyes. And then that's what we gravitate towards. But just because we gravitate towards it doesn't mean that we are necessarily unfaithful to yeah, our that's chicks. A, that's a no, great point. it's actually like to be honest, seeing a beautiful woman and then having the the value that you have have in your wife just smack that thought right out of the way. That's kind of a testament to your shorty. Like, damn, how, this how great is she? This another one of our talks on the way Exactly. How game. great is she is if I see another beautiful woman and, you mean, I'm feeling good and you see it, but your, your shorty, the thought of your shorty just smacks that out the way. To me, that's what I think them old heads mean is that you don't see no other shorty, but it's too literal. You understand what I'm saying? You see other women, but the sight of your shorty ends up, you mean, kind of fogging that out. That's how it should be. Be honest with us. And that's what we talked about the other day about... The value of your of your woman. The value of your woman. And that's what we talked about the other day about how old heads, they got to be real with us. And we got to be real with everybody else. It'll be easy for us to just play into the, to, to, to the graphic of women and be like, you don't see no other chick, K. When you find the one... You only see her. Get out of here with that. It's not true. You understand what I'm saying? And that's it. And that's just the reality. But you mean we have to start being honest in that way because say if you find a chick that you like and you're dealing with her today, but then you don't end up you, like you start seeing other chicks and you like <laughs> she must not be the one. You understand know what I'm saying? I'm gonna go over here and then you lose out. You dig what I'm saying? Thanks for watching. No perspective. Please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat.